Hello, so in this um, session, this information session, we're going to be talking through the pace of revision. So how to prevent overloading students with information and how to pace revision so that learning sticks and that feeling of burnout is avoided in terms of our revision. Um, so we're going to talk through some quite simple strategies um, relating to how to structure revision rather than how to revise itself in this session. So in terms of exam preparation or revision, we often find ourselves, our students describing themselves um, at being at some point along this scale. So either the extreme stress end of the scale um, or the extremely relaxed end of the scale where we've not done any revision and everything's absolutely fine or somewhere in the middle where we're just not sure what to do or how to do it, but it's very much on our minds that we need to be getting some revision done. A great starting point in terms of pace and revision is to figure out what type of reviser you are, what, where your, your child or where a student sits on this scale. Are they someone that's overly relaxed about exams, overly stressed about exams or somewhere in between? The main problem that our students have in terms of remembering what they've revised um, can be broken down into three key areas. The first thing is interference, um, something we've probably all come across before, but this is when one bit of information gets confused with another. So if students are studying really similar subjects, that may lead to interference problems with revision. Another problem that students encounter when trying to remember what they've, they've spent time revising is um, the fact that their, their revision has lacked meaning. So they're, they're feeling like they're doing work, but without doing any real work. So this happens a lot of the time when students set themselves out to revise and they've got all their books and notes out in front of them, but you know, they're checking Instagram or Facebook whilst revising. You think you're revising, you can end your day and say, oh, I spent three hours revising today, but really your brain is in a social mode. It's not in a learning mode, you're, you're elsewhere. And finally, for me, the biggest issue that we have is that stress and panic. So when students either are, are prone to getting very stressed about exams or they leave their studying too late, overloading their working memory and that they feel tight on time. And basically we, we go into that panic state where I've got so much to do and I've got no time to do it and I can't do this. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how our brains work with revision, because I think this is essential to, when we're looking at how to pace revision. When we learn something for the very first time, we use our working memory. The working memory is quite small. It can only hold around between five and nine items. So to learn something properly, we have to shift it from our working memory to our long term memory. Now, everybody's brain needs the same three things for this to happen. Repetition. So you have to start revision early or you won't have time for this. You need to go over the content multiple times to get that shift from working memory to long term memory. Using multimodal activities, so using visual, auditory, kinesthetic really helps to get that shift from working memory to long term memory and effort. It won't happen unless you actively revise. If you're trying to be clever with revision and doing revision whilst doing other things, whilst Netflix is on in the background, your working memory is overloaded and therefore you're not going to get any of this information into long term memory. So I just wanted to talk through a series of general tips for pacing revision. Again, like I said, this isn't relating to how to revise. This is how to structure revision. So firstly, start early. OK, this one's really obvious, but students shouldn't try and cram everything the night before the exam. So planning that revision timetable that we talked about in one of the other sessions, spacing out what needs to be learned and allowing enough time for each subject. It's really good practice to work backwards from the exam weeks itself. So planning first your last minute recaps of revision. So the night before your named exams or another sub, uh, session a few days earlier before that exam. And then recap at the start of a new session to see what you remember about the subject from the previous session of revision. Pay attention to how students learn, not just um, what they have to learn. I think this is something that often gets ignored amongst our students when they're revising. Um, but we don't tend to think about how well I learn, what makes me learn better. 
Um, if we're in that panic state, it's I need to revise, I need to revise, I need to get on with it now. But taking a step back and thinking about what environment suits you best is really, really effective. So things like our position. How does your body position affect concentration? Does your son or daughter tend to sit upright at a desk or lie on the floor or sit on the bed? In terms of food, do what time of day does studying sort of work best? Is it before dinner or after eating, while snacking? What kind of food do we like to associate with revision that helps with concentration? If you have sort of those sugary snacks for energy, you're going to get a short burst of energy, but then quickly become much more tired. Exercise, are you doing, is your, you know, your son or daughter doing the right amount to stimulate concentration or too much so that they're so tired that they can't factor revision in? The time of day, so do we study best, you know, say on a Saturday and Sunday by doing a few hours in the morning or at night or in the evening straight after school? Location, so um, are we best studying in our room, um, you know, at a library or staying after school in a classroom and doing a few hours before going home? Again, that's just on preference and what works best. Um, and company, so some students find it a lot better to revise with someone else than alone. I discovered at university that I really, you know, got a lot of benefit from revising with someone else that did my course and reading notes out to each other. Um, but it completely depends. For number three, um, again, I think this one's quite obvious, but something that I, I know a lot of our stu students don't really pay enough attention to. And this is the fact that we need to be doing something with the material that we want to learn. This is 100 percent more effective than just reading it and um, because it actually forces us to check that we understand it. Some things, particularly for subjects such as maths, need to be practiced, not just read or discussed. And um, so like maths questions, diagrams in a lot of science and psychology based subjects, language vocabulary. Um, I think where a lot of our students are, are failing with revision is by saying, oh, yeah, I revised for two hours last night. I read my exercise book. Well, that's just going to go in one ear and out the other. You're not engaging with the material. Sleep is a massive one. Um, and from working with a lot of our students here, something that I know is so neglected, getting plenty of sleep um, is essential. Sleep is the, the backbone of our being able to function. So one of the primary benefits of getting good regular night sleep is obviously that it aids and improves memory and recall. Research suggests that when we sleep, new connections are formed between our brain cells. So sleep actually prioritises memories that we care about. Our brain sorts these out whilst we're asleep at night. And this is obviously really handy for revision. An undeniable part of accessing exams is the ability to recall knowledge, and that's obviously something that sleep can help with. If you're not getting enough sleep, and even if that's because you're making yourself stay up revising, you're really going to set yourself back. Um, you're going to have worse concentration, poor memory, um, you're going to struggle to focus, your emotions are going to be much more negative, um, and obviously a weakened immune system. Um, number five um, is one that I'm, I'm quite passionate about in terms of revision, really. And this is the idea that we should be revising in short bursts. Generally, an individual's age plus two is the number of minutes that you can realistically concentrate for effectively. Um, I, I tell a lot of my students to aim to do 20 minute to half an hour bursts of revision. And it has been proven by multiple pieces of research that this is much more effective than sitting for hours and hours on end. If we can encourage students to do 30 to 40 minutes of revision in a burst, maybe two of those bursts a day, and that's something that is maintainable. Students can do that over a series of months or weeks, and they're going to be getting in those bursts of revisions on a daily basis. We can always find 40 minutes a day for revision. What we find a lot of students do is they'll set themselves a revision timetable or a schedule where they're doing three hours of English revision on a Monday and four hours of math revision on a Tuesday. And yes, students might keep that up for one to two days, but very quickly they will burn out because it's not maintainable you're not getting any other avenues of stimulation other than revision very quickly students become sick of it they feel like they're not making progress because your brain isn't actually able to work at that level that we need it to after around about half an hour to 40 minutes so what i would really recommend is promoting these short bursts of revision doing 
30 minutes, 40 minutes, setting a timer on your phone, um, 40 minutes. When that timer goes off, even if your, you know, your son or daughter is really into their revision, they're at a point where they feel like they're really getting somewhere, stop. Take a break. Have a good 20 minute break and try and encourage them to do something active in that break. So don't just sit on Instagram for that time. Uh, go and do a bit of exercise. Go for a little walk around the block. You know, go and make a nice bit of food or something like that. And then get back on it if they feel able to do another burst. Um, it's proven to be effective because our brain just slowly starts to switch off after that amount of time. And we don't even really realise it, but it does happen. OK, so for number six, um, research also shows that variety is better than spending too long on one subject, even with those little breaks that I mentioned in the previous slide. So spending, you know, 40 minutes um, or two short sessions on one subject, then a break and then moving on to a different subject. Um, it's really easy for our students to get bogged down in particular subjects. And um, I will hold my hands up and say that a lot of students will willingly spend a whole day revising psychology because they are interested in a lot of the topics that we study in this subject and whilst yes they are doing effective psychology revision it's really quickly to fall into a habit here where we only revise the subjects that we like so if we can make students keep mixing it up and doing 40 minutes of one subject and moving on to another subject we're ensuring that we're not going to have any of those neglected subjects um, number seven is a, a big one as well. Um, revising with the TV on is really common. I think a lot of students these days will revise with Netflix on in the background or whatever. Again, research has shown that we are not able to do this. So your brain will be confused trying to process what you're learning with the interference um, of input from the TV. So what students are doing in these situations is overloading their working memory and dividing the capacity for being able to pay attention. Um, listening to music, some people do find useful in terms of blocking out external noise. It should be quiet music, you know, music with no lyrics even in that setting, um, because that's going to interfere with the words that they're trying to learn. Um, but definitely, definitely no TV. TV is a massive interference. And what you can very quickly find is the programme starts to get interesting, your attention drifts, and before you know it, 40 minutes to an hour have gone by. And then finally, number eight in terms of pace and revision and, and structure and revision is trying to use both the left and right halves of the brain. So broadly, the left side of the brain stores the detail and the right stores our big ideas. So if we can encourage students to try and mix up their revision so they're accessing both of these sources. So um, a good strategy is to create like a big picture or a general overview of a topic or a subject even first and learn that. Then study the different parts in detail. So if we make an overview map of what you need to learn for a topic, then learn the component parts individually and break them down. Um, you could also do compound parts, so where you learn the first part, then the second, go back and revise the first and the second, then the third, um, and revise them in different orders. That's a really, really effective way of ensuring that your revision is accessing both those halves of the brain. So a few different tips there, really, on how to pace and structure revision to ensure that when our students are revising, it's time well spent and it's effective. Um, I hope you found some of them useful. And as always, if you have any questions about any of these general tips or anything else you'd like to ask, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.